Should we drop test it? Oh no, dude, that's so much money. This rogue ally and I. I'm getting butterflies. Have been through. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh. A lot. It's close. That's it, oh. not. Dude, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh my god. I have been on this thing every single day. Literally every day I play on my ROG Ally. We're at four months now. Maybe you're looking at purchasing this thing. Here's a disclaimer real quick. I'm not gonna be that, well, the 25 watt GDP out. I like to play games, you like to play games. First and foremost, I wanna talk about the outside, the build, the look. I'm somebody who is extremely destructive with my stuff, right? My phone is destroyed. My MacBook Pro is destroyed as well. I've dropped this like three times. I've stepped on it. I put all my weight on it by accident like four times. I've gotten water all over it. I have these rings, you know, that are constantly gripping the ROG allies, scratching into the surface. Four months of use. You can't tell. You can be rough and tough with it. You don't have to worry about scratching it or dinging it up. I will say the color is white and with white comes dirt. You can see it plain as day. I actually clean it. I clean it. I've cleaned it maybe three times now. This is where it gets crazy. If you get a little needle and you scratch along the sides of these lines, look at that dirt and gunk. That's like a granola bar's worth of dead skin and dirt. They will exfoliate your hands. The Steam Deck has already been destroyed. The right bumper doesn't work. A couple of the back buttons don't work. I have to push them, they don't click. And as far as the design goes, when you hold it in your hand, I will tell you it is definitely not the most comfortable. If you're coming from a Steam Deck, it's not comfortable. You're gonna have to get used to it. But once you get used to it, it becomes invisible. You don't care. It's much more compact than the Steam Deck. It feels smaller. Same screen size, smaller body. RGB, it's freaking awesome. Like on a moon in Starfield, you want them things to, to be blue. Just like, you know, good old vibe, right? Okay, so if you're playing in low light, you're playing before you go to bed, these things are shining in your face, going into your skull or the screen, you're looking out at the screen. It's not like, it's weird how it works. You're kind of in this realm of freaking like RGB chaos with the, the screen in the middle, which isn't so bright. And so to combat that, you have to turn down the LED lights to 33%. But I'm here to tell you that even at 33%, the low setting, when you're playing Starfield in the middle of the night, they're still brighter than the screen. And so you end up having to turn them off. And when you turn them off, you're a little bit bummed because you kind of like that stuff. Another thing in regards to build is the fans, right? The fans are extremely quiet, but I will tell you there's a problem. There's a high frequency and it doesn't stop. And it's it's kind of like a dog whistle, right? A lot of people can't hear it and I did some research and if you're, if you're younger than 30 years old, chances are you're gonna hear it. As we age, we tend to lose our sense of high frequencies. So my dad can't hear this, but I can. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the screen. The screen is absolutely fantastic. I'm telling you, it is the bee's knees. It is so pretty to look at. It's smooth as butter. What I really recommend you do is you go to AMD Adrenaline and you turn up the saturation and vibrance of your screen just to make it pop a bit more. Just adds to that more, oh, this screen is so cool effect. And it's not like we're doing Photoshop editing video on here, so who cares? It's for playing games and having fun. Now the big thing about this, oh, I love this, the Z1 Extreme. Trust me when I say that this can play absolutely anything that you throw at it. I'm one to test out these games and I'll show you here on my monitor me bumping up Starfield to 1440p at an ultra wide aspect ratio with ultra graphics and you'll see how bad it's performing but it'll give you an idea of how far we can push it. On this screen, you're gonna have no problems and your performance is only gonna get down as low as say 30 frames per second, maybe 25 if you're playing some heavy hitter games on ultra. But you can rely on this thing to play anything you throw at it. Yeah, you're gonna have to sacrifice a bit of graphics, but that doesn't go such a long way when you're playing on a handheld. Just know that if you're coming from, you know, from the Xbox realm or the console realm, you have to know a bit about computers because you will run into things that are computer savvy things. Okay, a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of modifications, a lot of um, tweaking things to get things right. 
Um, you can't rely on, on pressing on and off and playing your game all the time. It gets a little weird. Sometimes you have to change the, um, the resolution and make things fit more because there's distortion with the whatever. Like there's a lot of things that you have to know how to fix. So just understand that this is a full blown computer and you're gonna have to deal with that a little bit. The next thing I wanna talk about is battery. Listen, it's bad, but what can you expect? We're, <laughs> you know, I'm on turbo mode in Starfield, like obviously I'm gonna last maybe 45 minutes to an hour, a little less than that actually. Chances are you're gonna be playing this thing plugged in. Unless you want to go camping, you probably won't have an outlet. But then if you're camping, why are you playing the game? So let's talk about portability for a second. There's this and then there's this. If you're more portable, I'm telling you to go with this. Yeah, it's bigger. The case is bulkier, but the battery is reliable. And if you're someone that likes to just press the button, pick up exactly where you left off, close it again, come back in a couple hours, pick up exactly where you left off. This is why the portability wins on the Steam Deck. This, oh my gosh, the amount of times where I'm in the middle of a game in Starfield and I open it up and Starfield has been forced shut down or I'm playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and I'm like, okay, I gotta go get some groceries or whatever. I leave, I come back and I have to reboot the game and go back a save. That happens a lot with this and that never happens with this. It's pretty crazy how much of an impact that makes to how I feel about this device. The purpose of handheld is just to pick it up and play, put it back down, take it with you, pick it back up and play. But if you can't, if you have to be online to play a game or the game shuts down when you open it up, what's the point? The ROG Ally has a superpower that this Steam Deck does not, and that is fast charging. The ROG Ally can charge really, fast in about 30 minutes fast this will take about an hour and a half fast so when yeah you do play your game you run out of batteries you're not in a panic mode of oh i gotta sit by a charger for an hour and a half no no no. i can set it for 30 minutes and i'm back up and ready to go that to me is so good with the peace of mind another good discussion is the audio the speakers in comparison with the steam deck these speakers are incredible steam decks aren't bad but these are loud. The only time you have to worry about putting on headphones is when it's so loud that people around you start complaining. All in all, I absolutely love this freaking device. If you're looking at pulling the trigger on this bad boy, you will not regret it. I promise you it's worth 750 bucks. Understand though, the Legion Go comes out on the 31st of October, Halloween. So keep an eye out for that. If you're so close to making this decision, you might as well wait a week and a half or whatever. Listen, if you liked what you saw, you know what to do. If you didn't like the video, let me know why you did not like the video. I love making these things and I want to improve them. But uh, thanks y'all. Peace out.